Guys, before we get started with today's video, I want to show you some cool grow lights. This is the Mars Hydro SP250 grow light. It's absolutely huge, and this is the SP150. Mars Hydro reached out to us, and they are going to provide us with a coupon code down the video description in case you want to install grow lights in your garage or in your shop or in your house for getting your seeds started. Pretty cool. They're LED grow lights from Mars Hydro. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today we're going to unravel the mystery for you. So if you're considering planting a garden and you've never planted a garden, we're going to go through two different ways here that you can plant your seeds for your garden. Now there are a million different ways. There's ways with plastic cups, there's ways with peat moss cups, there's all sorts of different ways. But these are two ways that I've had success here on our farm getting our seedlings started. So come along today as we teach you a little bit about the Jiffy Peat Pucks and this Fairy Morris Pro Hex seedling tray. And we'll show you what soils to use. We'll talk a little bit about how all this works and we'll make it easy and simple for you. All right. <music> First of all, guys, let me welcome you to our farm. This is our 200 acre farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Behind me, you'll see our utility vehicle, and this is our mobile chicken coop. We have our chickens out on pasture. We move that coop either every day or every other day, and we let the chickens put out good old butt fertilizer for our lawn and for our pasture, so it's pretty cool. What we're gonna be doing here is starting all of our seedlings for our garden. For demonstration purposes today, I'm just gonna show you a few of these Jiffy peat pucks, and we'll go into detail about that, and I'll show you how to set up these right here. Now you can buy any brand, there'll be a link down in the video description to all the stuff that we're using today, but you know, you can buy any brand, you can go to the store and buy it. With the crazy times that we're living in right now, you may just wanna order it online. We'll show you all the tools that you need. It's not a lot of tools. You just need a little bit of know-how and we'll give you details that you need to know down the road. In other words, what do you do after you plant the seeds? How long do you wait before you put them out in the sun? What do you do? If you've never planted a garden, or even if you have planted a garden, this should be good food for thought. This is what we're gonna start with. These are the Jiffy Peat Pucks, okay? I put this on for display right here, but this is how the actual package will come. Let's set this to the side. I've got some onions in here. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes too. So this is how it comes. You're just gonna reach in here. You're gonna pop this little guy out, slide that. You won't need this unless you wanna use it to make some labels. So hang on to it until you get done. And it tells you on the back here a uh, list of instructions, but we don't need those because you're gonna learn by watching a video here today. So here's the lid. We'll take the lid off, set it to the side. A little thank you note from Jiffy. That's good customer service right there. Inside here, you have some labels. So. This brings us to our tools. So these little labels will stick down inside here and that will tell you what you planted where. There's nothing worse than having this planted and not knowing what the heck you have planted. Uh, also, this is a plant vitamin for seeds. I've never used this before, but we're gonna try it today. Typically, I just use tap water and these are little peat pucks. Let's give you a little close up. It is compressed peat moss in a little bag, okay? This little puck right here is compressed peat moss and your seed is gonna go right inside here, okay? Now you can wet this and these will swell up. I've got one down here that's already swollen. We'll show you. And I did this one yesterday. So these peat pucks will go from, it's pretty miraculous, pretty interesting to watch. They'll go from this all the way to this. So it's a little bag to hold your seedling. This makes planting your seeds so super easy. This is my favorite way by far, but we're gonna show you two different ways today, just so if you don't wanna go with the peat pucks, which I don't know why you wouldn't, you'll have another way. So here's what we're gonna do first. You wanna be on a nice level surface. We'll go ahead and set this one to the side since it's already ready to go for seeds. Okay, we're gonna have a nice level surface and the tools you're gonna need for this entire operation are gonna be pretty simple. I bet you got them all around your house. You're gonna need some tape. This is masking tape. And what we use this masking tape for is if we don't wanna use these little tags right here. I don't like these so much. I think that they fall down and they get lost and they go all over everywhere. So what we'll do is take a piece of masking tape. We'll pull it out. We might as well just show you. And we'll stick it on the side of 
our peat puck tray and we'll label it and we'll talk about the rows so we have 72 pucks in here this is enough to start an awesome awesome garden okay guys you can mix and match all sorts of goodies in here so you could do two rows of one type of tomato two rows of another type of tomato you could go in here with other types of small seedlings be it flowers wildflowers whatever you want to plant you can plant it all in here we have three of these 72 peat puck uh, plant carriers and if we have any extra plants we'll give them away to a neighbor if you've got a neighbor there's no better gift than a little tomato plant in a bucket that they can grow on their patio so pretty cool here's what we're going to do we have two quarts and you use two to two and a half quarts of warm water lukewarm water now before we pour this i'm going to talk to you about how we pour it because it's important we do it all at once so i guess first of all we're going to open up our little vitamin pack there's a little tear spot right there we didn't have to cut that or anything and we're going to go ahead and pour that in here i think it's yellow yep so we're pouring that in our quart jar if you're going to use these for canning or something later on be sure you wash it really really good i imagine that this has just some micronutrients in it and a little bit of phosphorus to help get that root established we'll toss that over to the side and here's what we're going to do we're going to take our two quarts of warm water this one has the solution this one has no solution and we're going to evenly pour this over the entire area we're going to do this pretty fast pretty hastily okay that's one and that's the other this is going to seem like way too much water but if you don't do this very fast what's going to happen is they'll start loosening up and when you pour it in you'll wash all the soil out of one of the little peat pucks so let's get a time lapse on these guys swelling up this is lukewarm water from the tap Wasn't that cool watching the time lapse of that thing swelling up? It literally takes about four minutes for this to swell completely up to their full capacity. They'll take up all the water that you poured in there. And I'm gonna say roughly two to two and a half quarts. If you put more in there, you're gonna have a flood and you're gonna have to pour water out. If you put less in there, then they're gonna dry out quickly. So now we've got moisture in here. What we wanna do, we don't wanna put our seeds in while it's really warm. Again, the water is tap water, so it's probably about 110 to 120 degrees. We don't wanna put boiling hot water or anything in there that's gonna kill any kind of microorganisms that we might want any beneficial microorganisms. So what we gotta think about is setting this to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and get the one that we've already worked on yesterday so this one's ready to plant here's a little secret guys we'll get you a little close up you've got all this condensation on the top of your little greenhouse i'll show you what to do now you see it now you don't just that easy tip it up slowly to a corner right here because sometimes you're going to have a whole lot of water and if you have these indoors which you probably will you're going to pour water out everywhere so now we are ready to start putting our seeds in here we're going to get you some close-ups of what we do and we have two tools that we're going to be using this tool and this tool just a finger and a lead pencil you can use any kind of pencil you can use a pair of tweezers you can use a stick a toothpick whatever you want to use what we're going to do we're going to show you with a couple seed pods here exactly what we do for success typically i would take row by row and i would go and i would do this okay but for today's demonstration purposes we're just going to do a couple of these but what i'll do is i'll take my little lead pencil and we're going to start right here in the center and i'll go right in and i'll poke a little tiny hole right there just right in the center and some of these bags like you can see this one they're a little bit tight so you want to open that up just a little bit and then poke it down in there just ever so slightly literally about that far okay so we're not going in very deep here we're going in probably a quarter of an inch we want to go through every single one of these and that way you know all of them are done and then once you plant the seeds we're going to tap them closed and i'll show you we're just going to take our finger that's tool number two and we're going to tap them closed we're just going to pat uh, peat moss back over top or soil back over top of our seed now a general rule of thumb for seeds and these are our roma tomatoes that we're going to be planting today the general rule of thumb for seeds is you want to plant twice the thickness of the seed and you'll see how tiny these tomato seeds are they're really really tiny all right guys let me be totally honest with you i typically will do this inside my house uh, on the coffee table pretty much i'll lay these out while i'm watching a little tv in the evening time and i'll uh, start poking seeds in okay we're just going to do a couple rows and every once in a while you might get one that's a little bit of a mess like this so just pat him back in there pat it back down and then take your pin 
or your pencil or your toothpick or whatever and fix it back up. So we've got this all settled. We're gonna go ahead and put our seeds in. Again, we're using Aroma tomato seed, and these are the Fairy Morse brand seeds. Pretty much the stuff you see in the little kiosk in Lowe's or Walmart or wherever you might shop. So we're gonna pour out some seeds in the palm of our hand. And these are tiny little seeds, guys. See how tiny those little seeds are? And what we wanna do is we wanna put two to three seeds in each one of these little peat pucks, okay? And I just pinch them out of my hand. You don't wanna pour the whole bag in your hand at once. You just wanna do a couple seeds. You just drop them in, drop them in there. So pour out about 30 seeds in your hand and then just hand pick them and drop them in, okay? Now, it really works better if you start on one side and work your way consecutively to the other and that way you don't miss any. There's nothing worse than getting done planting all your seeds and you've got missing <laughs> peat pucks. So get yourself organized and think about what you're doing here, okay? The reason we put two seeds or three seeds per peat puck is because we wanna make sure we get germination. If two seeds germinate or three seeds germinate, then we'll come back in with our little scissors and we'll snip them off, okay? That's just part of gardening. We're gonna get rid of the ones that we don't need. Inevitably, one plant will be bigger and stronger than the other plants. We wanna take a look at them after about two or three days after they've sprouted and got, I don't know, half inch tall, and we wanna snip out the ugly one or the worst one. So we're culling out the bad. Let's get you a close up of how we put our seeds in. So we'll wallow it out a little bit. We'll pull that to the side, that little baggie to the side. We'll wallow it out just like that. And then we'll take our fingers and we're gonna drop two seeds down into each hole. That was two seeds stuck together. There's two seeds right there. All we're gonna do, tuck those in. Again, they just need to be just below the surface and they'll even sprout right on the surface. So we'll use our little tool here, pack them down in. And we'll take our finger and what we're doing is just getting those seeds just below the surface. And that's exactly how we do it right there, guys. There's some seed right there. That's how easy it is to use the peat pucks. That's why I totally prefer the peat pucks over the trays, but I thought I'd show you guys the difference in the two. Before we start with the trays here, let's talk about seeds, okay? So we've got some seeds that are small, like these tomato seeds. And over here, I've got some bell pepper seeds. I've got small seeds over here, and in a bag down below, I have my larger seeds. This is what I mean by larger seeds. So peas, squash, zucchini, anything with a seed. We'll just go on and open this guy up. Anything with a seed, it's bigger, like that right there. Now you could sprout these seeds and you could really sprout them a bigger seed in this tray right here, but I prefer to just put these seeds straight into the garden. They do just fine. If you really wanna get crazy, you can put them in this tray right here, but odds are you could just put the larger seeds right into the garden. You just wanna make sure that you don't have a frost risk. So you need to check your map right on the back here and it has the time when you're supposed to plant them and the distance and the, everything you need to know. All right, I'll put my big seeds back in my big seed bag because these are going directly in the garden. Typically our last frost here in North Carolina is around April 15th. If I put these seeds in the ground, it's bound to frost. So also we have some sets. These are sets. I'll get a little close up for you here. So these are sets. These are for growing red onions. Okay, so you'll just plant that and that guy will turn into a great big old fat onion. Pretty cool. We won't put these in any kind of seed tray. We'll put them directly in the ground. And you can plant these a little bit earlier in the year. So we've got our tools, we got our Sharpie, we've got our pencil, we've got our tape, we've got our scissors, we've got things that we need for marking these guys. And sometimes if I'm gonna plant uh, tomatoes all one, it's windy out here. Sometimes if I'm planting tomatoes and I'm planting all one tray, I'll just tape the package to the top of the tray right here, okay? Now you wanna think about this and stick around to the end of the video. We're gonna talk about after your seeds sprout once we show you how to set up this tray. So these packages do not come with the little labels. I like these little labels for sticking in the dirt. I don't like them for the peat pucks, but these little labels are very handy for this kind of tray. So we'll get rid of our little guard here. We'll toss him to the side. And you can see there's a preparation right here. You can see how I folded it in two. So you have two plant trays right here, okay? 
totally separated. If you want to get all crazy, you can label each plant tray, or if you want to get real crazy and label each row, you can do that too. That's where you're going to need your masking tape because there just aren't enough of these little guys. Okay, so we're going to show you exactly what you need to do. We'll get everything out of the way here, show you what you need to do in order to get these trays started. So in this bin right here, we have seed starter mix, and it's really powdery you can see the wind blowing right here so if you're going to do this don't do this inside okay don't do it in your basement don't do it in your garage do it out in your yard that way when you spill some of this powdery seed starter type soil it will go into your yard and not make a mess that you have to clean up later so i have this in a bin you can buy seed starter at pretty much anywhere i'll post a link in the video description in case you don't want to go shopping with these crazy times we have right now with this virus um, you can order it online and they'll ship it right to you. Jiffy makes a seed starter. This is not Jiffy seed starter. This is uh, what I got from a local co-op. It's a tobacco plant seed starter. Okay, so what we want to do, we've already got our seed starter out here. Slide these guys over and I'm going to take my cup here and you can use any size cup or whatever you want to use, uh, bowl or whatever, and we're going to pour the seed starter directly onto our trays, okay? And this is the least messy way that I have found to do it. So we just take our starter mix and we just dump it upside down on there and we kind of move it around, okay? See how, see how that works, okay? Once again, just dump it and kind of move it around, just like that. If you've got two trays, it helps to butt two trays together if you want to. Um, we just want it to be flush with the top right here. So we'll continue to do this until we have both trays filled. It ain't rocket science and you don't have to do it this way, but this just seems to be an easier way to do things. And that's what I look for and that's why I make YouTube videos. Do a nice neat job and you'll be proud of it. Do a nice messy job and your garden will show you did a messy job. If you're messy in your garden, your garden is most likely not going to be very successful so you really have to be on top of your game if you're going to grow a nice successful garden it makes sense doesn't it and guys it's time it's time to get your seeds started it's absolutely time and if you've got a favorite flower or something like that that you have in your yard and you pick some seeds from it last fall or if you think about it this fall save back some seeds and you can plant your own plants so what we save back are uh, my favorite flower the uh, black eyed susan save back some of those seeds and that way i'll have some for planting in these trays and they're a tiny tiny little seed okay good to go here's the part where we make a nice big mess so you want to make sure all of your uh, little compartments are full of soil and we could do this in the yard that's probably what i'd recommend to you but what we're going to do is just do it right here so we're going to sprinkle some water gently over top of this seed starter mix we're going to let it soak in. You're going to find out that this seed starter mix does not want to take on water. It really doesn't. Okay, I want to try and make sure you're on a fairly nice level surface and they'll start taking on water fairly slowly. If you want to, you can take your fingers and pat them down, but it just takes a little bit of time and it makes a big mess compared to the peat pucks. That's why I like the peat pucks. This is a pain in the butt, and that is so super easy and simple. See what I mean? These just make a big, for lack of better terms, just a big stupid mess. They just make a big mess. So there's a tray underneath our, uh, our seed starters right here uh, that will fill up with water also. So you could pour a little bit of water on this, let it soak in, come back in an hour, pour a little bit more water, let it soak in, come back in an hour. But again, I think you're seeing right here what a pain in the butt it is to do it this way versus using the peat pucks. Now for the seeds, again, the same thing applies. Uh, if you're gonna put seeds in these, you wanna put your seeds in about twice the depth of the seed that you're sprouting, okay? We're gonna set these to the side because I can't even put seeds in them right now. They're gonna have to sit overnight or something. We've made a big mess. I don't like those. 
I like the peat pucks. It's so super simple. Now let's talk about what you do once your plants sprout. So you've got all your seeds all planted. It's been two weeks or so, and you can tell by reading the back of the seed packet how many days to germination. So these Roma tomatoes are gonna take seven to 10 days to germinate, okay? So you've got your peat pucks. Your plants have germinated. It's been 14 days and your little plant is about this tall. I'm gonna come over there. So your plant sprouted. This one hasn't sprouted yet, obviously, but your plant sprouted and he's about that tall and he has a cotyledon. That is the two leaves that emerge first from the seed. They are not like the leaves for the plant, okay? Those are the two leaves that initially get that first exposure to light. And that's what feeds that seed and feeds the roots so that the plant grows up. So you got your peat puck and you got a little plant in there. Maybe you've got two plants. Wait about five to 10 days, something like that, after your plants have sprouted and go in and cull out the bad ones. You plant this directly into the ground. If you don't want to plant this directly into the ground, you can pinch on here and tear off the little bag. But I'm telling you, you can plant it right in the ground in the little bag, okay? Now once your plants have sprouted, you wanna get rid of this plastic sheeting if it's in direct sunlight because this will turn it into a magnifying glass in the sunlight and it will kill your little plants. Once they've sprouted after about five days or so, you wanna remove this, you wanna make sure you have good airflow over top of your plants. You don't need to put any more water on these plants, okay? With the peat pucks, you don't have to put any more water on these plants until well after they've sprouted and you can tell whether they're dry or not. So a big problem that most people have, I'll toss that to the side, is overwatering. So you're putting too much water in there and you're drowning them. You don't want these guys to be in here floating around in a little pond. You don't want them floating around in a little pond. You want them just like this, okay? Not very wet and not very dry, okay? There actually is a little bit of water storage up underneath these guys, and that's enough. If you leave them uncovered for a couple days, you might have to add a little bit of water. Add water sparingly. That's what I'm telling you because you're gonna drown your plants, so you really need to think about that. So, do you set them out in the direct sunlight? Not right away, okay? You wanna introduce them to sunlight early in the morning or late in the evening, and you wanna kinda break them in. In other words, if you take those plants that have been sitting indoors that have sprouted in your house and you set them out in the cold, they're gonna die or it's gonna stunt the growth. If you set them out in the heat, it's gonna roast them. So you wanna be gentle. You wanna set them out for a half hour. You wanna set them out for 15 minutes not in direct sunlight. You wanna do it early in the morning or late in the evening if you possibly can, or the middle of the day, but not in direct sunlight. So you've gotta acclimate your plants to the direct sunlight. Don't take them right out of the house when they're this tall and put them in the garden and expect success. You're not gonna get it. You wanna wait till your plants are about that high, probably about four to five inches, and you're gonna start seeing roots. You're gonna see root structure coming out of these peat pods. I've had better luck with the 72 pack peat pod versus the great old big ones. The great old big ones tend to mildew and mold and get fungus. That's another danger. So if you don't have good airflow and you've got too much moisture, you're gonna have mildew, mold, and fungus, and that's gonna kill your plants too. So there's a lot of stuff you're working against, but if you're smart and you pay attention to this video, you'll have success. Once your little plants start to sprout, remove that globe on the top of it, the, uh, the greenhouse part, so that you don't roast them, especially in direct sunlight. Introduce your plants to direct sunlight very slowly and very gently. You wanna acclimate them to the weather and you wanna acclimate them to the sunlight. All this will breed you success in your gardening adventure this year. So guys, please pound that like button, jump in here, subscribe to the Stony Ridge Farm channel. As you can tell, there's a ton of stuff going on. That's our garden back there. Our chicken coop's right beside our garden. This is our mobile coop. These are our laying hens for the year. We'll have 50 laying hens. We'll have mobile coops moving around. We've got cows across the way. All kinds of fun stuff going on here on the Stony Ridge. Thanks a lot, guys. Pound that like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm. All right? Woo! Well, come on down to the Stony Ridge, bring your wife and bring your kids, we're living life pure and sweet, that's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge.